Hello there, my name is Kevin. I run developer relations at Directus, and today I'm gonna to tell you what's new in Directus version 10.9. Directors provide some really powerful image transformations via URL query parameters, including the ability to resize images. Up until now, whenever you resize an image, it would always do so from the middle of the image. In Directors version 10.9, two new fields have been added to every file, uh, which allows you within images to set an X and a Y focal point, so a specific point within the image, and then whenever Directors will crop and resize your image, it will do so around that point. Super useful, and you can obviously combine this with things like Directors Automate to, de to perhaps determine where that focal point needs to be. Directors version 10.9 also comes with a new hash display, which allows you to display a redacted version of data inside of the Directors editor. Of course, you can still step in and look at the raw value underlying that display, but it gives you this new option um, in order to just show that redacted value elsewhere. This one is less a new feature and more an important bug fix, but finally you can once again hot reload extensions inside of Directus when running it with Docker. This will take us back to the point where extension uh, development is a little bit better. Um, I know, we know it's been annoying the last few releases, but now thankfully that has been fixed. If you head over to our documentation website, there's a couple of big new things. Firstly, we hear you. Uh, hiding the sidebar on the homepage meant basically one more click to get anywhere. So we stuck that back on the homepage. And as of this release, we now have a new set of framework guides. So whether you use Next, Nuxt, 11T, Remix or others, we now have this lovely set of framework guides to help you get started with directors. We expect there'll be more to come and more advanced topics for frameworks. Uh, but for now, this should help people get started. There are three breaking changes in this release which shouldn't affect a lot of users, but I wanted to take a moment to tell you about them before you upgrade in case you are impacted by them. Firstly, we've updated our EXIF reader to version 2. So this is a package that we use to extract metadata from files that you store in Directus. Um, and in upgrading to version 2, the names of some of the metadata properties have changed. So if you're relying on those properties staying the same, you may need to go and update your external code. So just be aware of that. The next thing is that we've dropped the ability to import parts of the SDK through scoped entry points. This is actually a hangover from when our SDK was in pre-release and the community helped us, helped us with feedback. Uh, but before you could import, you know, from Directus SDK slash rest, that's done now. Everything gets exported from that root from that root package entry point. So just know that if you're still doing that and you upgrade to version 10.9, um, you'll need to you'll need to change that. And then the final thing to note is that we have a new Directus env package and moved over our environment handling into that package. Uh, you can still use ESM config files, but if you had any asynchronous logic running inside of the config files, they won't work anymore. Again, these three breaking changes um, shouldn't impact many people at all, but we always like to call them out so you can make informed decisions about when and how to upgrade. We have had so many awesome community contributions towards this release, and indeed all of the releases since version 10.8.0. So I'm gonna take a few moments now to call them out. Thanks to Yasir for making content versioning events available in Directus real time. Thanks to Mahendra for four contributions. For fixing an issue stopping some environment variables from being extracted properly. For ensuring hooks are triggered when updating relational data. For preventing users from setting null values in primary key fields when updating a field. And to change the keys argument in update items so it will now support keys but also a query. Thanks to Florian for using the current user's language in the field translation language selector. 
thanks to Kelf for improving filtering of collections when selecting related items. Thanks to Morton for fixing the filter selection in Directus Explore when using the search box interface. Thanks to Gerard for both fixing an edge case when applying schemas that would sometimes change foreign keys to nullable when they shouldn't be, and for fixing the background and search input height for the action column in the one-to-many interface. Thanks to Steve for shipping the new Oracle DB Pure JavaScript client in thin mode by default. Thanks to Wazim for a few contributions for fixing up some styling on the delete collection and field buttons for making default sorting a sort field, which totally makes sense, and for ensuring filter values higher than JavaScript's max safe integer work with the big integer fields. Thanks to Joshua for fixing the calendar layout to load only items within a current range when there hasn't been a filter provided by a user. Thanks to the team at GitStart for fixing support of pasting comma separated values into the is one off filter. And finally, thanks to Nassan for ensuring our CLI schema apply command output is better visible across different terminals and color schemes. There's a lot more to discover in Directus version 10.9, so feel free to check out the release notes on GitHub. Directus version 10.9 is now available on NPM and Docker Hub, so have fun with it, and we'll see you in the next release.